Hello YouTubers, this is the fourth video where we get to talk about what a microservice actually looks like from the inside. And in the last video I helped you understand, you know, how to build the entire, the entire CI CD pipeline uh, for a microservice, but we didn't really talk much about, you know, what that microservice actually looks like from the inside. So there are two parts of this. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to build a microservice from, from controllers to brokers, but I need to explain to you first what are these things and what they do. So I built a little class diagram here to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, every microservice out there, you know, uh, at least for the most part, uh, could have um, at least three of these classes. Most of them will have all four of them. Uh, the first class here is the controllers. The controllers in a microservice is basically where uh, the class that handles how the world is going to talk to you and how you're going to respond to the world. So for instance, your controllers will do a validation. When someone sends a request to your microservice to, through the API, your controllers will be the ones responsible about checking out the validation of this request, whether this user is authorized to use your API or not, and to respond with the proper HTTP codes that gives back the right signal to whatever client is using your API. So for instance, a, let's say you're building a microservice and this microservice is uh, responsible for adding two numbers, right? So if your request doesn't have two numbers, it has a string or it doesn't have anything at all, uh, from the controller end, the controller should respond with a bad request error. It says four, 400 error. It says this is a bad request. You know, your request does not match a, a given criteria in order for me to continue with this operation and hand it over to the classes that are responsible about actually adding two numbers or doing any other business logic operations. Um, controllers are also responsible about your responses, right? So if you throw an exception, if you uh, return a value, these controllers are responsible about serializing your response into JSON object and send it back to the outside world. So your service, your brokers, these guys don't know anything about how you can communicate with the outside world. Your controllers are the one responsible for that. On the other hand, services is where you save your business logic. So actually adding two numbers lives in the service. Actually doing the actual addition and actually doing the operation are the services responsibilities. So for a service class is not responsible about serializing anything. The service class understands models and does things with these models and may or may not call other services classes or broker classes in order for it to communicate with them to get some dependencies, some needed things in order for it complete to, to its, in order for it to complete its operation, but it doesn't know anything about its clients. The only thing that calls services are controllers or other services. Okay, if you get that part, another there are brokers. Broker classes, you may or may not need it, need it in a microservice. If your microservice does operations internally and it doesn't really have any dependencies, which is very rare, uh, then you won't really need brokers. But if you need to call other microservices, if you need to call other services, if you want to add stuff to a database, read stuff from a queue, uh, publish stuff somewhere, then you're going to need brokers. Brokers are the classes that are responsible about anything that your microservice need from a dependency perspective. So let's say you're building an API that goes and gathers all the information about a specific person that are publicly available through social media. Your controllers will receive the request that says, find this guy, find, find this particular person, let's say John Doe. Your service will initiate a request to call the Facebook broker, the, the Google Plus broker, the LinkedIn broker, the Twitter broker to go gather all that information. And then your service class will be the one responsible about uh, sanitizing that data and structuring that data and sifting through that data and removing uh, duplications and all that kind of stuff and preparing that data for a response. Once the response is ready as a model, it hands it over to the controller and then the controller takes that model and, 
converts it to a, serialize it to a JSON object and then push it back to the outside world. Models is the communication structure or the data structure that is being used for communication between all these three classes. Brokers need to understand models and serialize models for services to know what to do with them. Controllers need to understand models to serialize and deserialize back and forth to communicate with the services. So that's great. That's the theory. Let's go build something that looks like that, right? So I'm going to go in here and build an ASP.NET ASP core project. I'm going to call it iRecruiter Workers Service, like that. And then I'm building an API, so that's great. So let's go ahead and build an API. Great, I have a project in here, that's, that's great. And when you build a project, it comes in with a sample controller. You're gonna see here, you'll notice here that there is a folder called controller. And the controllers folder have the values controller, right? And uh, how you hit that controller is basically by going through the local host and then hit API slash controller, which will be values in this particular instance, and it should return that. Let's make a quick demonstration for that. When you run that, it'll, it'll start a, a Chrome or whatever, you know, your favorite web browser, and it'll hit that particular endpoint here. You can also use Postman to do that kind of stuff. So if you go to Postman, if you want to do post instead of a get, of course, I'm assuming you are familiar with the um, uh, RESTful operations and API values. But if I do that and then I click send it'll it'll get me the same thing these are the values that you see in the controller these hard-coded values right that's pretty cool but what i want to do here is that i want to show you how a fully fully structured microservice would look like right so i'm going to go ahead in here and first build some test project let's be fully ttd in here and i'm going to use x unit uh using I, I had this conversations with my colleagues, you know, at work, and it seems like Microsoft Test version two versus X Unit, they both are seem to be very appealing options. Uh, seems that X Unit is what the cool kids are using, but you know, maybe that's because MS Test two is very recent and very new. So that's that's something that you want to go look into and make a decision about. Uh, just just something good here to notice that MS Test 2 is a lot faster from a performance perspective, uh, test dis test discovery and execution than X Unit, and as as of the time of this video, MS Test seems to have a lot better code coverage uh, to work with Visual Studio than X Unit. I'm gonna go with X Unit. Feel free to try MS Test. It's up to you. Uh, here is my naming convention for that. I'm going to go use the same project name, so it's going to be iRecruiter Workers Service dot tests, right? And I'm just going to create that project. And just to make sure that everything is up and running, I'm going to build, I'm just going to say assert, just like I did uh, in the third video, the last video. I'm going to just do control RT and see if it's actually going to execute my test, which is just once, just a random test, right? And I expect it to go green, and it, and it went green. Great. So, all right. So, we talked about controllers, services, brokers, right? I'm going to keep that value, that very same value in here. I'm going to keep it, right? I'm going to use that instead of having to build an actual dependency. I'm just going to tell my, my broker to return that, right? The difference here is I'm going to have to show you some business logic and some work. So, let me go in here and build a a folder I'm gonna call it services and then I'm gonna go ahead and build another folder and call it brokers and I'm gonna go and build another folder and I'm gonna call it models these are your fundamental folders when you are building a microservice you have controllers service brokers and models Great, let's go ahead and build a model. I like to start from the model and then work my way up to whatever is out there. I'm gonna build a worker model. 
and I'm gonna say my worker model returns has a bunch of things. It has a an ID. It has a name, and it has a scale. Right? It has a scale. I did. Oh, what did I do? Okay, there you go. I did Control L for some reason. I don't know why I did that. And then we, you don't want to have uh, dependencies that are necessary. So Control uh, dot it removes everything for you. Uh, okay, I have the worker class. Now what I want to do? I want now that I have my model, I want to tell my controller here. I want to build a controller around that model, right? So instead of using this, I'm just going to go ahead in here and change my controller to workers controller. And let's call that guy workers controller. Like that. Cool. So now that we have all of that in place, now I want this guy to return a bunch of workers. Just to test our stuff. Just to see if we're are we in good shape. Right? And this guy here returns a an array of workers, right? So in return worker, I'm just gonna have it return this one worker in here, new worker, like that, right, I like that, let's give it just an ID, give it a name, this is obviously a completely fictional character, it doesn't exist in the real world, Josh McCall, something just right off the top of my head, and he knows UI UX, in, in the imaginary world, I expect that when I run my um, my controller up obviously sp.net uh, core is configured hard coded to start slash api slash values right while i'm at it let me show you how to fix this one you know if you go to um, if you go to the settings here if i can find that real quick uh, no i don't want to waste time on that all right, let's see. It should be, there it is, launch settings. See, in here it's telling it to go to, uh, to go to values. So you could just do it, tell it to go to um, workers. And you could define as many environments as you want, which is pretty awesome. You also get to define here your, your, um, your port, you know, local host, whatever you want to do. It'll do that trick for you, right? Now, what we want to do, we want to go and run and run that controller and see if it actually returns this imaginary character, Josh McCall. Let's see if that, let's see if that works. See how when I started here, it says slash API slash workers. It's pretty awesome, right? And lo and behold, it's JSONified. If you run it in here, the same thing. Uh, sorry, not values. <laughs> workers. Boom. No, API slash workers. No, I mean workers. There you go. That's Josh McCall right there, right? Cool. Um, now let's let's actually build this as a proper service, right? So I'm gonna go and take that dependency and put it all the way back in a thing called the brokers. And I'm gonna TTD this whole thing from the from the um, from the bottom up. So workers broker. This workers broker, I will implement an interface for it, and I'll tell you why, really soon. Uh, here's an interface, and I'm gonna call it I worker. I workers broker. And this guy implements a function that returns an array of workers. Get raw workers or get all workers. Let's say get all workers just for kicks. Right, that's what this guy is implementing. Everything is cool. This guy here will implement the interface I worker broker. And if you do control period, it will implement that for you. Not implement an exception, which is exactly what I want, right? Okay, let's go back to the controller. Start. We're starting from the controller all the way back. As a start, 
we want to build a service as a dependency for this controller, right? We want to build a bunch of tests for the controller. I'm going to throw here a folder. I'm going to call it controllers. Oops, controllers. And I'm just going to move that test in there, just take advantage of it. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, workers controller tests, like that. Rename my namespace. It's pretty cool when it does when you change the file, but I also was hoping that it would change this one, the name it's space itself, to to the folder that I moved it into. You know, IntelliJ does that. I don't see why Visual Studio can't do it, right? So okay, I have a test, but I don't have everything I need in my test. You know, I want it for the, for starters. I want to start with um, with the dependencies. And we're going to talk a little bit about dependency injection in here real quick, and then we'll get to that part. So let's go to workers controller here. And let's say I want my work, my controller to call the service in order for it to get the information it needs. Right? It needs some information. I want it to go and return that information. Right? So what I want, I want to build a service here. I'm going to call it workers service. Let's start with an interface. iWorker service. An iWorker service, let's put it as a public here. Because we're going to use it in our unit tests and whatnot. Control KD. And then let's say our interface is supposed to return also a list of workers. Get workers. Just like that. And then let's add you know, control period. There you go, control KD, everything looks clean. And now let's actually build the actual service itself, which is workers service like that. It implements I worker service, worker service and implement and it returns not implemented exception. That's it, right? You have not implemented exception all over the place. We didn't do anything yet. Let's go to the controller and say, for my controller, in order for it to use some dependencies, I'm not going to use a, a, a technique called the dependency injection. It's a solid technique. Please go back to it and understand what it's doing. But from a high-level perspective, I want to be able to control the dependencies that my controller is using in order for me to be able just what the controller is doing, but not anything else. So I don't want to go and run a test, and the test will go call three, four classes. This is a unit test. It's very focused on the method itself. So I don't want to care about my dependencies. I want to stop them or mock them in order for me to control what they're returning. So I'm going to build a, a constructor in here. Let me build a private member. Let's call it iWorker service like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't generate stuff for me. Uh, yeah, don't do that. I want it to use the existing iWorkers service, the existing thing that I built, here you go, and worker service. This is a private member that I'm going to initialize in here with whatever I'm passing in here. This here is dependency injection for it. This here is me saying whatever I'm passing inside of, of the constructor of that controller, that's going to be the dependency that I'm going to rely on in order for me to use the operations, to run the operations within my controller. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that up for for the constructor. So now I have that. Now I have dependency uh, injection. Uh, I want to say in here, first of all, return, sorry, throw new not implemented exception. There you go. So my controller here doesn't do anything really. It's throwing exceptions because I want to run the test first and then I want the test to fail and then I want to make my test pass and then I'm going to, you know, refactor right red green and then refactor let's go to my test in here and let's build some stuff first of all i need mock as a nuget package in order for me to be able to stub that uh, worker service so let's go to mock in here let's install mock in my test project click accept i i wish i could just squeeze all of this into just 10 minutes but it's just hard you know, there's a lot to talk about, and, you know, it's, it's not that easy. We're already into 19 minutes. I, I can't make it any better. So let's go ahead and say should call uh, uh, workers service. 
on get. Right? So I want my controller to call, to, I want here to verify that we're actually, I'm not testing what it returns or what it does with it. I just want to know if it actually calls the worker service on git, right? So what do I need here? Every unit test, you want to fulfill three conditions. Given, when, then. Given is where you initialize your dependencies in your test. When is where you do the stubbing and mocking. And then, then when you actually execute the operation and verify. So let's start with the given. What do I need? I need a, let's start with our dependencies. I need a workers service mock. Feel free to not use mock at the end of it. Feel free to call it um, redundant. But on the long run, that might help you if you're running a test to know what's a mock and what's not, right? It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead in here and say a new mock, and I expect it not calling the, the, the namespace. So here it is. And then I want to call iWorkers service, that interface that I want to mock, because it's overwritable. It'll just go to all these methods and ask me to set it up. I don't need to call the implementation itself. If you really want it to call the implementation, then call your method virtual, and then go ahead and overwrite. Uh, this is the right way to do it, basically. I love how Visual Studio will know what reference I need to do, and it'll just call it up for me, add the library. Didn't, didn't used to do that in 2005 and before. Um, I also want a controller. So this is my workers controller, and this is a new workers controller. This controller needs a dependency. This is the part that we care about. So now I'm just going to go in here and say workers service service mock dot object. So now I have passed my dependency into that controller. Now I can do whatever I want with it. Now I'm only saying, now that I control what my service mock is doing, now tell me what my how my controller behaves on these particular cases based on how I'm going to put in my setup, right? And then I want something to return. So we have, we talked about returning a, a bunch of workers. So workers result. And let's say here, this is a workers uh, array of things, right? There we go. And then again, I'm creating my fictional character that totally doesn't exist. Uh, ID GUI dot new GUI name, definitely not a real person, Josh McCall. And his skills are JavaScript. All right, there you go. Should that be happy? Hopefully, there you go. Great. So now that I set up my givens, let's set up the wins. Let's set up how the service will behave when a particular method in that service is being called, right? So let's go in here and say worker service mock dot setup. And in this service, I'm saying when this service dot get workers method is called, please return this expected result, which is the workers result, which should conform to the prototype or the signal of the of the service. That's, if it's returning an array of workers, it should return an array of workers, right? So that's the, the, the when, let's do the then then. Let's get the actual result, right? Let's call this expected result. Expected workers result. Let's call it that. Because we're actually gonna call the controller. So now let's do the actual, now that, that we don't know, let's, let's use worker, an array of workers, actual workers result. And this is when I'm actually going to call the controller and actually call the method, which is git. Right? This method technically should, oh, this guy actually returns an I enumerable. Let, let me go fix that real quick. You can actually do it on I enumerable if you want, but uh, ASP.NET, the controllers and whatever the folks did in it, they did a real great job that it will just, you know, serialize for you. You don't have to do a lot of stuff in there. You want to use I enumerable um, if you want to execute, you know, versus I queryable, you know, it's up to you. For the simplicity of this demo, just do an array of workers. 
uh, let's go back to the test and let's say, okay, this guy returns a, a an array of workers and then let's verify that. So let's assert uh, equal, right? Our expected workers result versus actual workers result. Technically, that's a beautiful test right there. That's that's a test that that you know verifies if I'm actually doing what I'm expected to be doing, right? So if I do control RT, I expect that test to fail because I don't have any implementation in my in my controller right now, right? Let's see if that's actually the case. And it blew up, and if you continue, it blows up and it says it's not implemented, right? Which is great. That's what we want. That's red for us, right? That's red for us. The method is not implemented, right? So let's go back to our controller. Let's go back to our controller and say, okay, return workers this dot workers service dot get workers like that right if I run my test now will that pass comma there you go green it's beautiful right and then we don't need to refactor that one so that's 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 pretty cool so here's this is this is how I built the controller part, right? You're expected to do the same thing with, with the brokers, right? The same thing, just the exact same thing. You go in and you do, uh, when, when you're test driving your service, obviously you have a dependency in here on, You will have a dependency here on the brokers and then the brokers will have a dependency and so on and so forth so for the purpose of this video you know how to build that I'm just gonna show you what I'm trying to do here with this service let's say you know you're instead of actually calling an actual database and building all that up I'm just gonna go in here and say return uh, for the workers service I'm gonna just go steal that Steal that result in here and maybe add a couple to it. More imaginary characters that completely don't exist. Uh, I'm just going to go add that in my controller. So I'm just going to go in here and say return this. Right? And let's add in more imaginary characters. Right? Let's go in here and say boom. A worker. And I'm going to put in here some deep pal just you know off the top of my head who knows oops sorry his skill is not his last name his skill is data science it's just you know not a real person I can I can say whatever I want about it right and my on my service my worker service will just initialize and and build that so I'm just gonna go in here and say you know, uh, private uh, workers broker, workers broker, there you go. And then I'm going to go in here. And then in my constructor here, I'm just doing that real quick now. So this dot workers broker equal new workers broker. And this dot workers broker dot get all workers. So this is what what your service is doing. Uh, why this guy is mad though? Worker, get workers. Are we not implementing what we should? What's the error? Workers, get workers, not all code paths return value. Really? Let's go to see what, what this guy does. Return new worker. That looks okay to me. Um, 
Yeah, but okay, that's that's cute. I mean, turning it into a function like that. Oh wow, why? Oh, that is weird. So it's saying not all code paths return that that that's gonna be a bug. I don't know. If you know why it's doing that, it should be exactly the same thing. This dot worker get all workers versus this. I mean, this might be. This might be Visual Studio just being weird. Uh, it's also for some reason we. Okay, okay. Get workers. It, it, it could be something. Oh, okay. I am stupid, not Visual Studio. I need to do a return. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, so now it's returning get all workers. That's great. And now you know how to build unit tests and whatnot. Now, you know, this, this is going to return all workers and whatnot. Let, let me rebuild my project in here. There's one thing I forgot to tell you about, though. If you look at your controller, you will notice that we are initializing the controller with an interface. There is no actual implementation there. So if you go and run your controller, it'll just blow up. Let me show you that real quick so you would believe me. If you run your controller like that, it'll blow up because it doesn't know what to initialize. It's an interface, right? It doesn't know what to do with it. Look at that. It says, it says, unable to resolve service of type blah, 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 while attempting to activate workers controller. It doesn't know what iWorkers service is. So you got to give it an implementation. It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, 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 a inconvenient thing, but how you solve it is just you're going to go here and say transient at transient. And you say for every iWorkers service like that, go ahead and initialize it with worker service like that. So now if we run our code, it should return all these guys, all these imaginary guys that don't exist. There you are. If you run that on, on your uh, postman, you'll see how it's returning that stuff, right? I want to get a little deeper here. Right, so you're telling me, so you, you may ask me, you, you say, okay, we build a controller, the controller is handing work over to, um, to the service, and the service is handing the work over to, uh, to the broker, right? Where's the business logic in that? I said, that's okay, you know, we don't have to have business logic. Let's say the IDs are something internal that, that we don't want to show, right? So you could build your own uh, logic to remove these IDs. Or for what it's worth, we could do even something better. Let's say we want all the names that are coming out to come out as uppercase, just for kicks, just for just to show what we're doing here, right? So I'm gonna go in here and say, get all workers, and then uh, let's turn that into a list. This is probably terrible code, but I'm trying to do some business logic real quick, so don't judge me. Here, and I'm saying for every worker, I'm going to say add a list in here. Let's say a list of worker, workers, new workers, here's a list. And then for this list, go ahead and add worker.name will equal worker.name.2 uppercase like that and then go add that back so it's going to be workers dot add worker and then I want to return that back so what's going to happen is that it's going to return every worker in that list with their name to uppercase right so it's probably optimized intelligent you know rocket science way to do this better I'm just you know doing something real quick so you can see what I'm doing there workers dot to array and now it's an array and everything is happy if I run my code again now and I try to hit that endpoint all these I expect our, our hypothesis that I expect all these names will come in as uppercase is that the case I don't know let's see look Josh McCall Sandeep Pal all of them uppercase you see how where I put the business logic the business logic is living here in this class, while this class is responsible about giving me raw data and returning some model that I understand. While this class, the controller class, is the one responsible about communicating with the outside world. 
right? So if the request is not good, it's if it's not right. So so, so look, the the thing is still running, right? If I uh, let's say for instance, if I'm calling worker, it'll just blow up and say not found. This is the controller handling that work for you, so you don't have to worry about, it, right? If your if your service is blowing up your controller will be responsible about returning 500 exceptions and 400 exceptions and whatever you want you want to handle that logic right in here this is basically a microservice this is a very example of what a microservice would look like feel free to drop in the comments any questions you have if you have any concerns criticisms or comments just feel free to post that and or reach out to me through my social media channels and I'll see you on the next video thank you so much for watching